from Dan Tartaglione, also known as D Tartag One. Uh, it's Saturday. Uh, this is going to only mean one thing: that we are currently on World's Day Two. Uh, it's going to be a four-game event. Everybody who essentially made it last week is going to be playing. We have 32 players. Those 32 players, again, are the ones you can actually see right here. So, Bastion, Chris Kelly, and Joe Olson all at the top. They're 6-0. and out. Uh, After that, we have a few 5-1s and ones led by Fernando Castan. Uh, I, I know I pronounced your last name wrong. I Again, I'm sorry about that. Uh, followed up by Justin Desai, Steve Baroni, Jared Napolitano, Matt Sokol, Aaron Kingery, and Paul Myers. Uh, not a lot of surprises with the five and ones. Maybe, well, with the exception of the big one at the top. I mean, Fernando, holy crap. Like, guy came out of nowhere. He's playing in his first Worlds and just goes five and one. His only loss is to Chris Kelly. So. Good job there, uh, going five and one, only losing to Chris Kelly. I mean that's a huge accomplishment. So congrats. Um, then we have a plethora of four and twos. Um, out of the four and twos, I mean, not a lot of people, not, no real surprises. I mean, they're all looking like they're really good players. So uh, it's going to be an exciting day. So again, we're playing four games today. And then tomorrow, we're going down to a cut of eight. So, 24 people, unfortunately, are going to essentially go home. <laughs> I know everybody's playing from home, hopefully, but at old sayings, what can you say? <laughs> so, today is going to be, uh, again, so everybody's records is going to be rolled over into today. So, for example, Bastion is going to start at 6-0. and uh, After the four games... It's whoever has the best record left. So, it's going to be a fun and exciting day. It looks like we're going to have a few other streamers as well, besides myself. Uh, Chris Goglin is going to be joining us. Uh, World Champion Phil Asen is also going to be joining us this morning. I believe Phil is going to be streaming the 6-0 and o game, so he's going to be streaming the Bastion of Winkle House and the Chris Kelly game to start off. I think I'm going to start off with this fernando Jill Olsen game, like... I want to see what Fernando can, can if he can continue the success. I mean, Joe is a perennial top eight player. He's one of those players who has done really well. He's won the MPC. He's won uh, the Player of the Year a couple times, or at least once. I know uh, he's always seems like he's in the top eight. I know he uh, came in second to Continentals to fellow day tour uh greg shaw a couple of years ago i uh, i want to say he topped four worlds last year so joe seems like he's always there uh and i want to see what fernando can actually do against joe so that's going to be a fun one to stream uh look for uh, a lot of other good games today um if the pairings look like what they're going to be today uh Desai versus brony is also a really good one we might actually do that one um seeing what Chris Goglin wants to do. So I, it's going to be a fun day. Uh, it's going to be a relatively quick day compared to last week. So yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be fun. Um, again, players were able there. So deck lists from last week were posted to the forums. So everybody can actually go on and say, Oh, well, this player's playing this. Well, why am I not playing this? Maybe I would have gotten into day two, but uh, players were able to switch up the decks as, if they wanted to. So we ha we might have some new decks today. We might not. Uh, I do expect to see some Hitco, some Hunt Down V. Uh, I also expect to see some Watch Your Step. I mean, Watch Your Step, Hunt Down V, and Hitco were the three most played decks from last week. Uh, I still can think that ISB is pretty relevant. It's a really, really good dark side deck. And with Darkseid not having a lot of options, I think that's good. Um, outside of that, I mean, it's going to be interesting. Um, maybe some QMC. I mean, it, it, I'm excited for today. Uh, we got a lot to go over. It's going to be fun. Again, only eight players will, be avail uh, will make it till to tomorrow. And then we might be crowning a new world champ. 
We might be crowning Bastion for the third time in a row. I mean, how exciting would that be? Bastion going for the three-peat. Uh, and then we have J uh, Justin Desai going for his third world champion. Uh, and not to mention, if you notice, just down here in the five and ones, Matt Sokol. Matt Sokol coming back, going five and one uh, last week. Uh, as well as his partner, Aaron Kingery. Uh, Matt, if he wins, he'll be a two-time world champ. So, a lot to go on. Uh, a lot of people, again, looking for their first world champ. So, it's going to be exciting. And we'll be back once we have the uh, the game. So, see everybody then. So, you know, I'm gonna go, we're going to go into GIMP. I know a lot of people are coming in right now. Uh, people are asking just to take it easy on the casual games right now. Just because, again, with worlds and everything, uh, trying to keep the server as good as it can be so but get your games in have fun watch some games uh i'm gonna talk to scott get some giveaways as well today so we'll see what we can do maybe i'll give out some more packs uh i think i'm running low on the foil card so but we'll give out some packs you know have some fun and uh have a great day okay we'll be back in a few
Okay, we are back and the players are getting ready. Uh, joining us today again will be uh, Chris Goglin and uh, Phil Asen, uh, former world champion Phil Asen. Uh, so for our first game today, it's going to be a fun one. Uh, we're going to do the Paul Myers and the uh, Fernando game. So I looks like Paul Myers has his deck already posted. He's going to be on the dark side. As we can see, we got a lot of other players posting right now. And just waiting on Fernando to join into the Paul Myers game. And we are go, everybody. So good luck to our players. Let's have some fun matches and let's play some Star Wars CCG. So looks like Paul is playing IE today. And Fernando is going with Legend. So I know I, I want to say Fernando played... Uh, I'm not sure what Fernando played. Let me double check and see what Fernando played last week. But... And let's see what Paul played. I want to say this is the two same decks, but again, don't don't quote me on that. I'm usually wrong. Pulling up the deck lists right now. Okay, so Fernando played. He did play Legend. And Paul Myers played IE. So, yeah, both players are playing the same deck as they played last week. So maybe they did some changes into the deck, but we will see. Uh, but, yeah, this is going to be an exciting match. Uh, Fernando coming off a 5-1 and one victory. Paul also 5-1. and one. Two players who got to 5-1 and one on day one. So, okay, it looks like your normal setup for both players, actually. Let's see, did Paul, looks like, okay. Paul went with the Endor Shield Pool first. Uh, Fernando also used his, uh, he went with Strike Planning to pull Leia. So Fernando, or, uh, Paul went out and got Admiral Piet. So, and there is the pool with the uh, mobilization points. So... Fernando not wasting a shield pool as Paul already occupies a battleground system. And we are off. Paul has 11 cards in hand. Fernando has 9 after uh, their strike planning and endor shield pools as well as their mobilization pool, point pool. Paul activates and we're probably going to see the normal setup with Paul uh, going with the executor docking bay. Uh, deploying Piet, pulling another character there, and then possibly putting somebody out in space onto the Devastator. That way it's not lost right away. Oh, Paul has a, another pooler in hand. He's got the something special planned for the pooler, so... Or grabber, I'm sorry. And he also gets his other grabber as well, so he's got four effects on the table. And he's going to also get a battleground with his site or with his objective. Uh, so, yeah, Paul is really familiar with this deck. He played it a lot during the OCS. I want to say he went with Hitco and IE most of the way over the OCS. So, if anybody knows IE, it's Paul at this point. Uh, so, it's going to be interesting to see, like, how he takes this matchup. Like I said, he knows this match really well. Uh, again, he because he has played IE so often. So, going to see how Fernando handles this match. Okay, Ozel goes on to the executor er, onto the Devastator. Uh, he got the Desert Heart out. Uh, the big thing about the Desert Heart is movement. Uh, you require one plus move or plus one movement there. So, if you deploy a guy there, they're essentially stuck. There is Piet to the docking bay, so it's going to add plus two to his activation. So Paul already activating 12 off of turn one. Even though he only has uh, two sites out, he is activating uh, 12. So, he, okay, Piet's going to, he's going to use Piet's game text, probably getting a Admiral's order. Uh, again, we saw Fernando get General Leia. General Leia has, is a way of canceling all of those Admiral's orders that Paul is going to play. Um... 
I, I think it is important that Fernando gets out the general lay as soon, uh, early so that those orders are canceled. Uh, so we might not see him res uh, put her, uh, the Leia back into his deck with a Brave Resistance here, instead keeping that Leia in his hand. And I believe the multi-channel uh, is currently up right now. So if you want to watch myself as well as watching Chris Goglin and uh, Phil Asen, those are both available. I believe Phil is doing the Chris Kelly Joe Olson match. Uh, Chris was waiting to see what the deck types were, so I'm not sure who he is streaming, but I could actually get into multi Twitch and see. Okay, and there's a Blizzard Scout 1 uh, to reinforce Piet. So, if Fernando came down with like a Cornhorn or a Jar Jar or any other spy, there's a little bit of protection there for the Piet. And it looks like Chris is streaming a CCT versus a Diplo. I uh, can't tell who the players are. Oh, the Baroni bashing game. Okay, that's interesting. So, I want to say Baroni's on Diplo. That's interesting. I mean, if this is the case, yeah, Baroni's on Diplo. So, that's uh, interesting to me. Like, he switched up. Uh, I know he didn't play. I want to say he didn't play Diplo last week. A lot of people weren't in favor of Diplo. So, the fact that Baroni felt like he was confident with it is uh, interesting. Yeah, he was on Legend last week. Okay, and so let's see. Phil, or Paul also gets out. Uh, Lieutenant Arnett and Corporal Obrick. So, he's re reinforcing both those locations. Uh, he doesn't have any force left, but he does have that second grabber, so... I think it's a good setup for him. Uh, this is going to, just in case Fernando comes down with a spy or with a starship, this is going to save Paul some uh, some force. Uh, because he's playing the Imperial Arrest Order, all those little guys that Arnett, the Obrick, and the Ozel all have forfeit plus two. Okay, so Fernando is going to uh, use a Brave Resistance to put Leia back into his deck, and he's going to get a Resistance character out. So, this is one way he can check his deck instead of spending one force to go get a site with the objective. So, again, I think Leia is going to be really important in this matchup, mostly because, one, the battle deployment will allow Paul to get out combat vehicles, and the other thing is uh, your opponent only draws one destiny, so... Or they're they're limited to one destinies at sites that of the systems that you occupy. Yeah. And so looks like uh, in the Chris Kelly Joe Olson match, uh, Joe is playing Watcher Step, and Chris again is playing Hunt Down V. So again, expected a lot of Hunt Down V today. Uh, it was the most played Dark Side deck last week. So again, with players playing, uh, uh, players feel confident with it. So why not go with it? Okay, Fernando making his choice. Fernando's taking his time with it. I mean, it makes sense that he takes his time. Again, putting uh, Legends is a good deck, but as long as those Admiral's orders and all the tricks that Paul has, Fernando has to be cautious. And again, because Paul has played this deck so much, you, you, you want to be a lot more cautious in this match. Okay, he's going to take Poe. Uh, not a bad choice. I, I think Poe is the right choice here. Uh, you got to threaten the dark side player in space. If you just give up the, the Tatooine system, 
you're 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 going to hurt yourself in the long run because the, your opponent can then get 10 wing occupation out. They're going to satisfy for battle order really easily. So, now the other thing Fernando could do is just if he can set up his drains in space, that's not a bad move, and then just ignore the system. But again, like you're giving yourself up with that uh, 10 wing occupation. Interesting that Fernando is going with the Maz Castle site. Uh, a lot of people have abandoned that one, mostly for the interior, as the interior site offers you a drain minus one. It's a drain minus one for the dark side player, whereas this one is a two. Okay, there is the saddle, so he's going to get Luke Skywalker, the last Jedi out. There he is. So I think he's going to abandon really doing anything because Paul can't Paul's not going to drain here up in space because of the objective okay there is the interior 01 site and Fernando is going to grab force projection as well so I think this is just him going to be drawing a couple cards and passing turn over to Paul uh, Fernando got a lot of his activation I mean he had to use he got Three, uh, two sites out this turn, so. But I think now Paul knows that Fernando has the Poe, so he's going to want to try and reinforce up in space, just in case Fernando has, like, uh, layers of resistance transport. He can get out um, Vice Admiral Holdo. And he has Metis Fades in hand. Metis Fades not going to really come into play. I mean, there are only ping drains on Tatooine. So, I, I think in a normal game, Metis Fades is a really, really good card. Like, against Hunt Down V, it's really good. Uh, against ISB, it's really good. Against IE, it's not really the best card. You would rather have something... I'd rather just be able to lose it to a force drain. Because, again, all those drains on Tatooine are just going to be drains of one. It's more just you're taking, you're going to be taking like possibly three to four drains of one on Tatooine. But it's really the occupation damage that's going to be the big thing because he can get you for like three or four occupation damage. But we'll see what Fernando has up his sleeve. Okay, Paul activates and he's going to use his docking bay puller to pull out a docking bay. So I still think this. I think this is a big, big test for Fernando, being that he is playing a player who knows his deck so well. But I think Fernando again is up, going to be up to the challenge today. I mean, like I said, he went five and one last week. I want to say he played uh, Steve Baroni and was able to beat Steve. Uh, but let me let me double check my uh, posting. But yeah, let me double check that with my sources, which of course is the forums. Okay, so there's Docking Bay 94 for Paul.
You know, both players taking their time on their turns, making them... Uh, they want to think out what their possible strategies are. Like I said, Legend is... You, you take away the best character from the game, essentially, with Luke. Don't get me wrong, like, Leia's good, uh, Rey's good, Obi General Obi-Wan Kenobi's really, really good, but when you are missing characters like Luke, who has really strong immunity right now, especially in, like, a Hitco, you're, you're taking away that, so... I, I like Legend, but in this matchup, you do want to take your time and place your... You have to place your uh, your characters correctly. Now, we could see that Paul just wants to take his time and react to what Fernando is doing. Uh, Paul only has a six-card hand here, while Fernando has a 12-card hand. So, again, I think Paul wants to be a little protective he's got to be protective of his sights uh especially with the so right now the desert heart is is the best place to drain if you're the light side character but again your guys essentially are going to be stuck there they can't move to any of the other locations uh outside of like an odin nesta combo uh or shuttling them up to the system Uh, it looks like Paul is using his objective to go get another site. Again, we know that Paul has the flagship uh, executor in his hand. We know that Fernando has uh, Poe Dameron in his hand. Interesting, Paul goes and puts out the docking bay next to the docking bay. Uh, usually we'll see the docking bay's apart from each other but i think what it is is he doesn't want to give fernando room to run uh because his he's going to have a lot of uh, combat vehicles giving fernando room to or essentially run with the document transit isn't the best thing okay and he's going to use his uh admiral's order to get another vehicle out Let's see if he goes with, so he's playing the Blizzard Scout 1. Blizzard Scout 1 is usually good with an AT. AT. Uh, so maybe we'll see a Blizzard 4 here. Maybe we'll see a Blizzard 2. Uh, if he plays the Blizzard 2, we might see a, if he has the Blizzard 2, I would say the best character to go with the Blizzard 2 is General Veers. But we will see. I, I think right now the best thing is, to for Paul is to get the Blizzard Scout one over onto Tatooine, and then he can sh uh, we can actually put Piet onto the Blizzard Scout one, Docking Bay Transit to Tatooine, move Piet off of the Blizzard Scout one, and then put him onto the Devastator. This will give him a little bit more forfeit on the Devastator, just in case Fernando comes down with someone. But it looks like, okay, so he's going to go over onto the Executor. He's going to put the Tempest Scout Walker on there. Uh, Tempest Scout 5 doesn't really have a lot. He uh, has a permanent pilot ability 1. Uh, but the big thing is he adds 1 for each of the year, other to your total power for each of the other vehicles. So, yeah, I think, okay, Sergeant Barrick onto the Devastator as well. Barrick is with another biker scout trooper so what's good is he works like a, a bright hope so you draw destiny you subtract that from your total uh your opponent's total power and total destiny so okay we see piet hopping onto the blizzard scout five. Oh, that's great because there is a pilot on the the, the blizzard scout one it already has a permanent pilot on it so it only has a slot from one pilot so he couldn't so this is why he had to go with the Tempest Scout Walker over there. And he's going to draw. Interesting. So he's not going to move anybody over to Tanoine just yet. I 
I, I still think this is a solid turn for Paul because it's going to set him up really nicely for next turn. Uh, what he can do is he can docking bay transit both those walkers to different docking bay. So I, I think because he knows that Fernando has a Poe Dameron in his hand, he had to reinforce up in space. That was the big issue for him this turn. Okay, so we're going to go into Fernando's second turn. So Fernando has a lot of force and a lot of cards in his hand to work with this turn. Let's see what he can do. Uh, he still hasn't used his force pile pool with the objective. So maybe we'll see him pull something this turn. Nope, and he's going to start off by pulling out a location. Let's see if he goes with Jakku or if he goes with another Acto site. Okay, currently, Paul is down by six minutes on Fernando, so uh, this is a, a game that has the potential for the clock to come into play. Uh, I.E. is a grindy type of a game or a grindy type of a deck so and again the clock might come into play we'll see okay there is the Jakku system uh, Fernando will also play Rescue in the Clouds so peek at the top three cards of his deck uh, Paul will not grab I think that's smart you want to save your one at least I think you want to save your grabbers for the Odinessa combo and the Rebel Leadership those are the two big ones Let's see. Uh, I'd like to see if Paul thinks that as well. Okay, there is the Relay's Resistance Transport coming down at Hadoween. So, good on Paul for realizing that Tatooine is a liability for him this game. Okay, Oldo comes down for... Uh, Holdo is the character that he grabs with uh, the transport. She does come down for free. There's the Poe. So, now that transport is immune less than five. It has the capability of... Yeah, that's true. The occupation camp. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Poe coming down. Now he's got two Destiny there. It's immune less than five. Uh, you got to think that Paul is going to play an Imperial Command if he has it. Limit him to one Destiny and then do the Obrek. And Leia coming down as well. That's going to cancel that Admiral's Order. And Fernando, if he battles here, will be able to retrieve one. I just noticed that the... What? I'm by... Uh, yes, because of the Admiral's order. That's why. Okay, Paul grabbing his secret plans. Uh, the face-up. Um, there are the effects and... The defensive shields. Okay. Fernando will initiate a battle. Uh, Padme comes down as well. Padme will... Uh, even if Paul has the Imperial Command here, what's important is Padme will allow Fernando to get a Destiny to Attrition. Okay, so he does initiate... Uh, and he does not, 
Yep, he doesn't use uh, Leia's game text to retrieve. Paul comes down with the Tempest Scout Walker. Fernando has his own Ernesto combo, so that's going to be can uh, cancel that react. So Fernando has a lot of cards. Uh, Fernando had a lot of cards in his hand, so he had pretty much what he needed to come down here this turn. Let's see if Paul has the imp command. If not, Fernando's going to be able to draw two Destiny. Okay, there's the first action for Fernando. He gets that Destiny to Attrition. So Fernando won't be able to grab. Okay, Paul has a sneak attack, so he can add one Destiny. Uh, he, because he has two... Because he has two back scout troopers here, he can get that second Destiny. Fernando will subtract two from Paul's power. Still don't see the imp command, so... Looks like Fernando's going to get two Destiny. Rebel Leadership to add a Destiny. Interesting that he uses it to add a Destiny and not limit. Ah, so the blue cards are defensive shields. They're once per game you can, or four times per game you're allowed to uh, take those out, uh, out from... Uh, underneath this uh, card right here, this is a starting effect. Uh, under it, you're allowed to play a number of cards that will. Uh, they're out of out of play. You know, they're not. Uh, they're outside your deck. So. So two big destiny right there for Fernando. And he draws a one, so he's got eleven. That's before attrition. Again, Paul is getting two Destiny, but he's down by a lot right now. Okay, there's a three and a four. So he's got seven on his own. So he's got... So both players... Uh, so Paul right now is down by one in power. Fernando draws a four for attrition. Yeah. That one really hurt. Okay, Paul draws a 5 for Barrick, so he's only down by 10 in attrition, so he's still going to have to lose uh, multiple characters up there, though. Now, Fernando is uh, going to have to lose 7 here, so probably going to be losing the Padme. Yep, he announced uh, who he wants to lose first. So, he is going to lose the Padme here. Now, let's see what Paul can do on the beatdown, though. Again, because he's going to be losing four here, or because he's going to be... He's going to be... He's down by ten, so he's going to lose Obrick and probably going to be Ozil as well. Yeah. Because you want to keep Barrick. Barrick is too important at this point. So, not having that in command really hurt for Paul. But, again, it could have been worse for him. I mean, it did cost him a sneak attack and two characters. Fernando only lost two, uh, one character. But he did have to play some pretty important cards. And I think if you're Fernando, getting that... Third Destiny wasn't that big because he only drew a one. Uh, if he would have limited Paul, Paul would have. Uh, he, I think he would have been able to not lose anybody in that battle. So let's see if that comes back to hurt him. Um, he also did not flip this turn. He didn't place Luke out of play. And flip, so he still has that force projection in his hand. But now we move on to Paul's turn. Let's see what Paul can do to... Now, the other thing is Paul could easily just move over to Jakku. 
Uh, now that we would give up the system and it would be a drain of two. Yeah, if I mean it, it wouldn't have been game um, because Paul has the flagship in his hand. But yeah, Paul would be in a lot worse of a position if he would have lost everybody off the Devastator. So let's see what Paul can do this turn. I mean, he's going to, he did use his Imperial Arrest Order. So according to Ryan Sarson, right now we have five CCTs being played, five legends, and four no ideas. So and that's in the first sixteen games. So there are sixteen games going on. Uh yeah, that's that's four uh nine of the sixteen games are legend and CCT. Or legend and no idea. Yeah, Barrack is so important in this match. Even if Paul, if Paul can get a second biker scout trooper there, he he won't be as it won't be as bad. But I think giving up the system at this point might be just the best option for Paul. But we'll see what he wants to do. Again, he knows this matchup pretty well. Uh, he's going to play force push, so he's going to put two cards back to get a card. While we have a little bit of a break, let me actually see what decks are being played today. Okay, going over some of the decks right now, let's see. Uh, Aaron Kingery is playing TTO, so we've got one TTO. Jordan Napolitano is playing a No Idea. Uh, Tom Kelly is playing CCT, interesting. Uh, Charlie Arlinson is going with Watcher Step again. Again, we know what Paul Myers and Fernando are playing. Uh, Justin Miyashiro is playing a Set Your Course for Alderaan. Greg Shaw is playing Legend. Ryan Jelson is playing No Idea, while Kyle Kruger is playing C uh, Set Your Course for Alderaan. Uh, Jared Consker is playing Hunt Down V. Uh, Matt Harrison Train is playing Legend. Uh, Rickard Erickson is playing a CCT. And Trenzo is playing Hitco. Uh, Timo is playing a No Idea. Uh, Drew Lichtenstein is playing a CCT. Sagnet, who. Let me just double check that. Uh, Sagnet. Oh, Sagnet is Rickard. Uh, James Martin is Solid Snake. Sorry about that. Uh, Sagnet is playing Legend. Uh, Brett. Brett Carlson is playing. Uh, set your course for Alderaan. Interesting. We got a lot of set your course for Alderaan today. Uh, Chris Warps is playing CCT. And Ketwal, who is Kieran, is running a Hitko. Justin Desai going with Legend. Um, oh no. Uh, Aaron Kingery, sorry is playing just on the side currently. Uh, Kingery is playing a Shadow Collective, so that means that... Uh, where was that other one? Jared Napolitano is currently playing Matt Sokol. Matt Sokol is playing TTO. A uh, friend of the show, uh, Matt Lutz is playing Hunt Down V versus Connor Britton's No Idea. 
Joe Olson is playing Watch Your Step, and Chris Kelly is playing Hunt Down B. So, yeah, that's all the decks that are currently being played today. Uh, we're still waiting for Paul to pull out a card from his force pile. So he gets out uh, Tarkin. He's going to put Tarkin down to the Desert Heart. Interesting. Now, he doesn't have to occupy... So, f to flip, he just needs to control three Tatooine sites. So, he can easily just keep Tarkin here and move both of these over to Tatooine and then abandon the system to cause the flip. If he moves over to Jakku, that'd be a drain of two there for him. And he knows that Paul's big characters up in space or he knows that Fernando's big characters up in space are right now at Tatooine now it would be a drain of two but I think if you're Paul that's better than trying to fight over the system okay there's Moff Gideon going on to the Devastator interesting and Sergeant Iroll coming down as well Excuse me. Okay, so now I will will work with Barracks. So Barracks still is in effect, and there's an Imp Justice. So Imp Justin will cap Poe. So, and the other thing is, it won't. Uh, Fernando will not be able to cancel anything that Paul draws for Destiny with his uh, the flip side of his objective. So. Pretty good. Now he could... I was going to say he could uh, shuttle Tarkin up to the Devastator. We'll see if he decides to do that. Uh, okay, so he's going he's gonna to keep the Devastator there because he just gets out Tatooine Occupation. So he is going to fight over the system. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to do. Um, well, I mean, it, it, it isn't hard to actually, it's not really hard to do because he could easily just move those walkers over and then shuttle Piet up and then do it. Yeah. Um, but I'm not really sure. I, I think it's because the Devastator is going to have so much forfeit potential right now and that's the other thing yeah the flagship doesn't have any immunity it's just a bunch of power and like I said your guys have so much forfeit right now I mean okay so right now with Barrack and I roll there they're each forfeit plus two um, the other thing is I mean you're going to get more forfeit once you sh he brings up more characters onto the Devastator. And because with the Injustice, not uh, it's not, he's not going to... He's going to limit Fernando to one Destiny. So losing Padme there kind of hurt Fernando because now he won't have that Destiny to attrition. And that that's the way to really clear the Devastator. So what I think we'll see is maybe Fernando shuttling Leia down this turn and then moving the transport away and setting up a drain over here. At this point, yeah, and that's another good point. Um, right now, Fernando needs to start working around Tatooine. Okay, Paul's going to just draw. Interesting. Now, because he knows that Fernando played one of his Odin Nessler combos, uh, and it, it is in his deck, he should be able to react around with his uh, walkers. Uh, maybe he has a gick in his hand just as a, a way to, as protection. I don't know.
him he is drawing cards and he does retrieve with his objective he saves three cards Okay, so Fernando does take a card with his, his objective, so he uses his once per game pool. Yeah, I think Fernando needs the flip. That's the big thing. Because Paul really can't do anything against those, those drains. But now that Paul is showing drains of four, plus the occupation damage of four... Fernando might want to just try and battle in space. Try and get rid of the Devastator. Paul still has yet to have the flagship come down, so at least he's got that. Okay, got some really interesting games going on. I'm surprised that we are seeing a TTO today. Uh, same with the Shadow Collective. Shadow Collective is in a it's a new deck. It is in a weird spot. I'm not surprised by Hunt Down V just because those pesky Inquisitors are really good. Uh, Brody playing Diplo is interesting. Uh, a lot of people weren't haven't been high on Diplo right now, so kind of a surprise. Uh, the fact that we're also seeing the three set your course for Alderaan's a little bit of a surprise. Uh, we are seeing another, oh yeah, uh, Gavin versus Crypto uh, is a Watto versus a Hitco. Uh, Hitco. I, I feel bad for Crypto in that match. So, action is still on Fernando. He did take a card with his objective, so, and he is in his control phase. So let's see what he's got to do. So here comes General Kenobi. Going down against uh, that Carpal Dresselin. And Shuey with Bowcaster. Just in case a walker comes over. Okay, here's the initiation. Uh, Fernando will retrieve with Leia in this battle. But he's not going to retrieve. Interesting. Okay, here comes a walker down as a react. Uh, again, we saw Paul try and get that out last turn. So now Chewie can uh, shoot the walker. Fernando decides to flip. Okay. I actually think shooting Dresselin is the right idea, just because he actually has a little bit higher forfeit value, and he's easier to hit. Um, I think if you're also Fernando, you got to watch out for Trample right now. But let's see what goes on, so... And Paul is going to react with the Tempest Scout 5 as well. Interesting. Um, uh, no, Chewie can shoot. Uh, 
because of the light side objective, Chewie can still shoot. It's only the dark side player who loses the ability to fire any weapons when he flips. Okay, Piet and the Tempest Walker move over as well. Piet can and does get off. And here comes the Blizzard Scout Walker as well. And my light just went out. Wonderful. I, I've got one of those smart bulbs and I have it set off to turn off every day at 8. Uh, I keep it on during the night for my animals. Okay, Chewie's going to fire at the Blizzard Scout 1. Draws a 2. I believe he needs a 3 or higher here. And there's a 4. So that walker is grounded. Okay, so Paul is outpowering Fernando. I think a right play here is to take the card off the Justice, probably take the Justice off the Justice. Uh, instead, he takes Blizzard 4 off. Yeah, losing that Blizzard Scott Walker might hurt Paul. Fernando is going to use his objective to check and see where, uh, where he wants his destiny. He's going to put them back he's going to put them on to he puts them on to the force pile so he didn't like his object or he doesn't like his destiny and he draws a one uh that's going to be the biker scout trooper that's on the blizzard scout walker Um, gold leader is still good. Okay, Fernando draws a four, or uh, Paul draws a four. He draws a sneak attack. Fernando plays the force projection. Uh, there goes, and he draws a four. So, no increase in power, no attrition for Fernando. So, Fernando is down by five, though. So, you got to think Chewie's still going to be lost here. A gold leader is still good uh, because it, he makes you lose, uh, makes you use a destiny. Okay, Fernando is going to peel cards. And he's going to keep both his characters there and he's going to peel cards. I think if you're Paul, you retreat with everybody. You just run away because it's only a drain of one there right now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he lost. Uh, so Paul lost Lieutenant Arnett and Walker. Uh, Fernando lost Array with Lightsaber, Rebel Barrier, Gold Leader and Gold One, and Yoda, Master of the Force, all from his use pile. So, I think keeping the characters was a good idea, but he kind of lost a little bit more. So, I think if you're Fernando, what you do here is you shuttle Leia down, yep, and then you run away with the transport, because your drain over at Jakku will still be a drain of two there. Wow. It's like he's listening to me. And you're currently now draining two at that site. So you're doing drains of two and two. So that's not bad. But now Paul is going to be able to drain for one and one and do... Oh, he cancels the occupation. So it's just he's just going to do drains of one and one this turn instead of doing four damage. Good to see him playing their free ride combo. Uh, and it goes used. Uh, Paul can't grab it. So good time to play that.
Okay, so there's a drain of one. Uh, Fernando loses the Falcon. There's another drain of one. He loses uh, Help Me Obi Wan uh, and quite a mercenary. So, I mean, that's a good card to lose, but the Falcon kind of hurt. Okay, looks at like the top three cards with his objective. See if he's got a second occupation in his hand, or maybe he's got like a no escape or something. Because right now, um, things are looking good for Paul. I mean, Fernando is going to be doing four points of damage. Paul is retrieving, so that's good. Um, there isn't a rose on the table. That's also good. And Paul has a blizzard walker in his hand, so... Uh, let's see what Paul has up his sleeve, though. Uh, the biggest problem for Paul is he's currently down by 11 minutes on Fernando. So, Paul needs to pick up the pace. And he puts, so he plays Tarkin's bounty on Admiral Piet, even though Tarkin is there. Paul. Bad. The bounty's supposed to go on Tarkin. Uh, he does play Trample on Chewie. He draws a four. He actually draws a trample to for his trample, so Chewie goes bye bye. So And there's the Blizzard Scout one. Or Blizzard Blizzard four. So, a lot of power for Paul. Uh, he hasn't searched with the Blizzard 4 yet. Uh, he would have to use two fours to pull a character. Blizzard Scout 1 coming down. So he's got a lot of walkers. And he does initiate. Uh, he's currently up by 11 in power. So he didn't have a second occupation to come down though. I think he's wait I think he's gonna wait and see if Fernando has a rebel leadership here before taking a card off the imp justice. I still think taking a card off the imp justice, the probably the imp justice is the right move here. Uh, Fernando can't Fernando cannot cause the cancel and redraw here. As with the errata that occurred to Legend, you need two Resistance characters to do it. So here we go. Draws Battle Destiny. He draws a four for Destiny. And Fernando draws a five. He can actually add one here to that. Uh, he does not. So 
Fernando or Paul will first lose Cor Corporal Dresselin. And Fernando is down by 10, so... Let's see who he decides to lose here. I think so, I think the right play is to... Unless you have a, the Hojex here, you lose both. But he will lose just Kenobi and the Saber that he just drew. I, I didn't like draw, drawing the Saber there, or pulling the Saber, only because it is a Destiny 5. Uh, you're still playing... Qui-Gon in the deck, so you could have actually put the uh, the Saber onto Qui-Gon if you would have kept it, but okay, Paul is going to move the Devastator over to Jakku, so that's going to block that drain there and Leia's drain is currently blocked as well so Paul's not going to take any damage here uh, okay, he's going to retrieve one with his objective. He's going to probably retrieve that trooper he just lost. Yep, there it goes, wrestling back into his deck. Uh, he's got two, four saved. He's going to use that one for the Blizzard four. And he's going to pass turn, saving a force for his grabber. So, pretty good turn for Paul. Uh, you got rid of the Chewy and you got rid of the Obi-Wan. And you also block those two drains, so... Good turn. Uh, again, Barrack is in effect up in space, so you can take a card off the Imp Justice, limiting your opponent and making sure that they can't cause a redraw. Okay, oh, projection of Skywalker coming down. Uh, I want to say this is going to, uh, what basically Fernando is going to do here is he's going to move the transport back over to Tatooine and probably shuttle Leia up. Uh, you can't move her over into the Desert Heart just because Paul could battle you next turn. Oh, and he's got Ahsoka down. Um, if Paul takes the card off of him, just ah ah Ahsoka doesn't really work here. He knows Injustice is on the table. I, I mean, I, I understand that once you get rid of the Injustice, you have those cards in effect. So, okay, he does battle. Uh, he is going to retrieve one here. He retrieves the saber. Uh, Paul should immediately take a card off the justice, limiting Fernando to one destiny. Uh, first, Fernando is going to check with his objective here. And he's going to, pro uh, depending on what he gets, they could go on top of the reserve deck. If he likes his destiny to go in the reserve deck, if he doesn't, force pile they go back onto the force pile so he didn't know uh, he did not like what he saw there paul takes a card off the justice yeah i think this is a bad battle because now barracks still could work he does take the justice there is a five for, for, for fernando it brings him up to 13 uh, I don't think Paul's going to crack the immunity of the, the transport. Yep, he draws four, so that will not crack. But he is up by five, uh, four right now in total power. And there's the barrack. Barrack is a five. Now Paul doesn't have to lose anything. Oh, it's canceled and redrawn. And Paul draws another five. So, yeah, Paul doesn't have to lose anything. Fernando has to lose nine. So, you gotta think, like... I understand trying to go down with the Lando and the Ahsoka. But... The problem is, is you you knew your opponent had M Justice out, and he has an M Justice on the M Justice, so he's going to get four more times this game to limit you to one destiny, and your objective won't work on destiny. So, okay, now he's going to move Leia to the heart, 
and just draw. Interesting. Okay, there's a rescue in the clouds. I... So, Paul knows that he has two destiny. Well, he only can activate 13. So, you're not, uh, the likelihood of him getting those two fives in a row is slim. But we'll see what he does. Um, I think if you're Paul, you honestly, yeah, you activate. You check with your objective. Yeah. So it doesn't... You check with your objective. Um, you look at the top two cards and what I believe they... Yeah, go back and then you shuffle. So he can't really track his destiny at this point, though. But he is going to check with the Imperial Rest Order. So now he'll be able to see what kind of destiny he has. I mean, they're all blind draws at this point for Paul. Um, yep, there's the other Justice. It's going to stack three cards that will... So he'll have five, destiny, or five cards left in his uh, reserve deck. He's got a four, a four, and a five. One of those fours is a second uh, Tidal Wayne occupation. But I think you can battle into the Leia. If, you have, if he comes down with a Imperial Leader on Leia, oof. He could actually be able to clear that layout. Okay, so here comes another walker. A lot of Tempest Scout walkers in this game. And a blizzard too. Oof. That's a lot of power coming down on that lone layout. It looks like we've already had a few games end already. Ah, thank you, Queso. 23 months. Wow. Shouldn't you be working, Jerry? Okay, so we have a battle here. A lot of power coming down on that Leia. Takes a card off the Imp Justice. I think he's going to take the uh, Tatooine Occupation. That or he takes the... Uh, the trample. Yeah, I think right now this looks like it's going to be Paul's game. The biggest thing that Paul has to worry about, though, is his time. Okay, he takes the uh, he does take the trample off of uh, the injustice. Okay, action is... Oh, here we go. Battle Destiny. Paul draws a 1. That's not going to crack Leia's immunity. Uh, I mean, he's up by 12, so... That's pretty good. Fernando draws a 5, so he's going to be down by 7, though. Uh, I want to say that's going to be the Tarkin. Nope, he loses the Blizzard, too. Interesting. Uh, yeah, especially because, I mean, he loses the, the Blizzard, too. I... You can't you you have to lose Leia here, Fernando. You have to lose Leia. It's gonna hurt. Yeah, you can't take seven. Okay. Battle order is back in effect now. Um Fernando's gonna have to pay. It's a drain of two. I think you can take the two. So I think you slide back on over over to Tatooine. Okay, Paul's going to reposition all of his 
is walkers. Yeah, I still think he's... Well, now that he's only got three cards... Yeah. Okay, so he's going to leave the Devastator over there. He's going to retrieve, and he's got one upkeep. He's going to stay with three cards in his hand. So, right now, that's Paul's biggest other problem besides the time, because he is down by 12 minutes. Hurry up, Paul. <laughs> he's only had... He's only had, like, three or four cards in his hand to work with each turn. So, he's doing all of this essentially with his objective okay so he does he does retrieve he does pay the upkeep on uh, Blizzard 4, and he does pass turn. He has four cards in his now. Did he retrieve the... Oh, he didn't have a card in his Lost Pile to Retrieve. So he drew one. Okay, Fernando activates. Okay, let's see what he can do this turn. Uh, Lay is in the Lost Pile, so I mean that takes away part of his Retrieval. Uh, he's, got, he's not going to cause any damage to Paul, but... And there goes Ray. Ray going down to the Moz Castle site um, with Solo. So now, I mean, that's gonna that would be a drain of two there. And oh, and BB-8 coming down as well. So Fernando calls an audible. He puts down uh, BB-8, Ray, and Solo. Uh, now he's going to be causing three points of damage there. I mean. And we know Paul has a Tatooine occupation on his imp justice. I think I know that he could have. Uh, two, we know that two of those cards in Paul's hands are one of them is a trample, the other is the flagship executor. Okay, Fernando will put his walkling out of play. He retrie he's going to retrieve that Leia. I do not recall if he used two, uh, both of his strike planning pools this game. I assume so, just because he had Leia in his hand twice this game. Because he did use uh, Brave Resistance on turn one to get Poe out. And he's going to draw a bunch of cards. Uh, saving one in his force pile. Uh, currently, Fernando has 24 cards, hand in life. Paul currently is sitting at... 22 hand in life Paul or er, Fernando is out damaging Paul currently uh, based on the board states uh, he's damaging two to or three to two yeah Paul can't give up that drain at Jakku now so he's got to sit around uh, what he could do though is if he could drop the flagship down on Tatooine and get the occupation out, then he could potentially do a little bit more damage. Okay, but he's going to start with the drains. He drains at the heart. Uh, Fernando will lose a Hear Me Baby. Fernando then plays Rescue in the Clouds, so he peek at the top three cards of his deck. I also think that Paul could drop the flagship right now and severely outpower Fernando. I want to say it would be I think the flagship's 12, but or 12, so that'd be 23 to 6 with one Destiny and Barrack there. Uh, he's got to save all three cars there, so he really can't 
use the objective if he decides to do that. Yep, and he doesn't, yeah, he does drain at the docking bay. Fernando does lose the resting in the clouds that he just played. Uh, he did not use the objective, so again, yeah, he could just drop the flagship here. Power Fernando by a lot. And he would have one card for Battle Destiny, and then he would have two cards for Barrack. So I think that's what he's going to go with this turn. Uh, he did check his destiny, so he knows what he's going to be working with this turn. Pulls a shield. He pulls useless gesture as Solo is on the table. Uh, both players have one shield pull left, and there is the flagship coming down for 13 force. That's a lot of force. Okay, and we have the battle, so initiates off of him justice, let's see what he pulls, I think he pulls, yep, there's the, he, draw, he takes the Tidalweed occupation into his hand, currently up by 15 in power before destiny, uh, so Fernando only gets one destiny, he can't cause the redraw with the destiny, but he can cause a redraw with, for Barrack. There is his battle destiny. He draws a six. Wow. Important. What's important here is, I mean, that's going to crack that immunity there. Fernando draws a five. Okay, and let's see what uh, Paul has for... Uh, Barrack destiny. Again, Fernando... Uh, yeah. Here we go with Barrack. Barrack should come into play here right now as action is on oh action is still on Fernando he can't cancel and redraw that okay uh, here comes Barrick but we're going to see a draws a four Fernando should cancel and redraw that destiny, though. Uh, but he lets it go. Uh, that tells me that Paul had a five left. There goes Sergeant Eye Roll. Uh, I think Moff Gideon might have been the better one. Just because now Barrack can't be used. Okay, there goes... Uh, Okay, Holdo goes away, so now Poe doesn't get the destiny. Oh, Fernando's just, he lost all the characters off that ship. And he's not going to, and let's see, does he peel or does he lose the ship here? If he loses the ship, Paul will uh, play his battle order. Uh, he's going to peel, so he loses a rescue in the clouds and a rebel leadership, both from hand. Um, I mean, he can run away with the ship, but we know that Fernando, or that we know that Paul is going to follow. Uh, this will allow Fernando to drain for free, though. Okay. Plays rebel leadership. Pull General Leia. Okay. So Leia will at least cancel the battle deployment but we like I said we're, we're gonna see him run away with the ship over to Tatooine Paul's gonna follow uh, not before he drains for two though at Jakku next turn
Okay. And action is on Paul. I think you you got to keep the Blizzard 4 out. I mean, Fernando does have, like I said, he's got the Leo left, so you keep the Blizzard 4. Just in case he's got another Nestor combo or something to cancel React. You don't retrieve. And you just pass turn. You just gotta go faster, Paul. Okay, but we move into Fernando's turn. Fernando say activates everything but three. Uh, and we're going to see him do three points of damage this turn. Yep, it drains a two at Maz Castle. So we're down to our, we only have two games left going on right now. Uh, we have this game. Oh, okay. So Paul is going to be drained for three this turn, but he's got a canceler. He's got an always thinking with your stomach. So it's going to cancel the four strain. And one of those characters is going to be placed, uh, is going to go missing. Actually, I believe it's what all the characters now go missing because he draws a four for Destiny. Yeah, draw Destiny. If Destiny's higher than the number of characters, choose one of those characters to go missing. He chooses the BB-8, so he cancels the drain, and now BB-8 goes away, so now he can't do damage there. Wow. And, and again, there's a shield for that, so... You gotta think Fernando did not see that card coming, so... You want to say that maybe Paul had that the entire game. So, huge turn of events now. Instead of losing three, Paul loses one card and makes BB-8 go missing. And Fernando can't search for BB-8 because he drained. It's one. Of, I believe it's one or the other. But we move, uh, action is on Fernando, so he could be trying to recollect himself now. Okay. 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 So he does get to be able to search party here. He does find the BB-8. He draws his first seven. So okay, you do get to find first a search party, and now Paul still has to lose one. So he loses the Imperial Command. But again, he cancels that drain of three. So he doesn't lose three. He loses one instead. Okay. Fernando is going to. Search with his sight. Doesn't find one, so he checks the first destiny.
Looks like Bastion won over Steve Maroney. And Leia's coming down, so Leia will cancel the Admiral's order again. And Paul will attempt to trample her. He needs to draw a six. So he draws a six, so he was tracking his destiny. Okay, looking over some of the winners right now. Uh, Charlie wins. Matt Harrison Trainer won. Ryan Jelson won. Uh, Ketwall won. Bastion beats uh, Baroni. Jared Napolitano won. Sagnet won. Sagnet is... Uh, Rickard. Rickard Erickson. Uh, Greg Shaw won. Drew Lichtenstein won. Justin Desai won. CRG won. Solid Snake won. Uh, Brad Kippel won. Gavin wins. So, yeah. And it looks like uh, Fernando will concede. So, congrats on Paul on his win. Well played uh, by both players. Uh, again, I think uh, clearly the card that won the game for Paul were the two imp commands. Uh, the fact that he had one out and was, and got a second imp command on top of the one imp command was really good. Barrick was amazing for him. That turn that he drew two fives in a row. Really, really lucky. Uh, again, he was able to track that six to get rid of Leia. So, well played. Uh, again, so now we're just getting ready for uh, game two. I believe we still have... One game currently being played, that is the Joe Olsen-Chris Kelly game. Uh, yep, they should be finishing here soon. So once game round two's pairings are set, we'll be back for that one. Uh, until then, uh, go watch uh, Chris Kelly and uh, Joe Olsen play. We'll be back uh, in a bit.